Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how to use um, the TI-Inspire to look at piecewise functions. So there's a couple of ways you can deal with them. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm on a calculator page and I am going to name the function f of x. So f, open parentheses, x, and get out of the parentheses and uh, we want to do control and then the templates button to get colon equals and now we actually want to press the templates button um, so we can pick the template. So if you look, there's a lot of templates, and the one that we want is one of these two. So this template will give you uh, two pieces, and this one, it looks like it gives you three, but it actually gives you a choice of however many pieces you want. So maybe I'll just choose this one for now. And once you're in here, you basically type each piece. So maybe our function looks like 3x minus 1. Um, now we need to put in the the criteria, so the domain for this part of the, the function. So I'm going to say, uh, let's say negative 5, and then I'm going to press control and equals to take me here, and I get all my relational symbols, um, less than or equal to x, and then press it again, control equals, and maybe I'll just do less than uh, 0. Now I'm going to press tab to get to the next box and put in whatever you want. So maybe I'll put in, I don't know, uh, negative five plus two X. You can put in any function, it doesn't make a difference. Well, I mean, you put in the correct one, but the calculator doesn't care what you put in is basically what I mean. And now I'm gonna press, so you can kind of see this, this box is uh, grayed out, like it's not as dark as the, let me erase this. It's not as dark as this box. This is a mandatory box, I have to fill this one in. I don't remember what I had there, so 5 minus 2x. Um, this one is optional. If I don't put anything here, what's going to happen is um, for every value that's not between negative 5 and 0, where you count negative 5 here, um, the function uses this definition. So maybe I'll just press enter here, and you can see it fills in the word else. So between negative 5 and 0, it uses this definition, and anywhere else it uses 5 minus 2x. So if I find f of... Um, let's say f of negative 2. So f of negative 2. Negative 2 is definitely in here, so it's going to do negative 6 minus 1, negative 7, and it works. If I do f of 0, so 0 is not in this interval because I didn't include it, so it should do 5 minus 0, so it should be 5. If I do f of negative 6, negative 6 is also not in the interval, so instead of using this piece, it's going to use 6 plus 12, so um, 18, 5 plus 12, um, so 17. So we get that. So that's if we choose not to fill in that box. Uh, let's define a new function. So I'm going to name it g of x. And then I have to use colon equal, so control and templates. And I'm going to go back in here. And um, maybe I'll make it have three branches. So this, it asks you how many you want. Uh, you can do an awful lot, like more than you'll ever actually do. And I'm going to go with just three. So three branches. I'm just going to type in uh, like one maybe when, uh, let's say, let's say it's just one when x is less than negative uh, five. And then let's make it, I don't know, two when we're between negative 5, so I'm going to include negative 5 for this, less than or equal to uh, x, and then I'm going to also include whatever I decide to get. Let's go with positive 5, and then let's say 3, when x is greater than 5, but I'm going to choose to fill it in, because um, kind of I kind of personally just don't like when it says else. Um, but it, it obviously doesn't make a difference. So x is greater than 5. And now, if I just do g of some values here, so let's do g of negative 7 should be 1. Um, g of negative 5, so you don't use this definition, you do use this definition. So I'm going to say g of negative 5 should be 2. And uh, g of positive 5 should be three. Nope, false. Why is g of, oh, what did I even do? g of 
five equals two. Um, and I don't know, g of 10, three. All right, so those are a bunch of things you can do. Uh, you can also, let me, we can also graph these. So I can take this function and put it on a graph page. So press doc and insert, I'm gonna insert a graph page. And since I already defined it, I'm just gonna press the var, nope. I press the var key um, and pick G of X and hit enter. You can see it graphs our function. Or if you didn't already define a function, so let me insert another graph page. If I didn't already define a function, I can do it right here. So maybe I want to graph uh, x squared minus two when x is less than zero and x squared, maybe negative x squared, I don't know, plus two when x is uh, greater than or equal to zero. So if you're typing on the keyboard, you can type greater than or equal to. If you're using uh, the handheld, it's way faster to do control equals and then just choose the right symbol. You can see when I press enter, it's gonna change this, the greater than equal, into a greater than or equal to symbol. So let me change, show you. See, it changed it right here for us. And so we get our graph. Um, you can trace the graph, menu, and then five, and then graph trace. Um, when you're tracing the graph um, at the breaking points, it does what it should do, and that's really nice. You can just type in values that you want. So if you want x equals one, there you go. If you want x equals negative one, it'll bounce over there. Um, so a lot of stuff that you can do. Uh, and that's about it. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.